Words of support and sympathy pouring in from across the country this morning for Senator John McCain. McCain's family announcing he is discontinuing medical treatment after a year-long battle with brain cancer. And ABC's senior national correspondent Terry Moran is in Sedona, Arizona, right near the senator's home. Terry, good morning. Good morning, guys. It's the pre-dawn hours here in this beautiful, peaceful place. The McCain family and close friends are gathering here in Sedona, and the senator himself is at the ranch he loves so much, just a couple of miles over in that direction, a place that he chose to stage the last good fight of his remarkable life, a fight that it seems now has reached its final days. After a year-long battle with brain cancer, John McCain's family revealing a deeply personal decision. The Arizona senator has now chosen to discontinue medical treatment. His family saying in a statement, John has surpassed expectations for his survival, but the progress of disease and the inexorable advance of age render their verdict. With his usual strength of will, he has now chosen to discontinue medical treatment. His wife, Cindy, adding, I love my husband with all my heart. God bless everyone who has cared for my husband along this journey. McCain's friends in Congress are sending their love and support, too. Connecticut Senator Joe Lieberman saying, Becoming John McCain's friend has been one of the great blessings of my life. Today I am praying for him and his family. Senator Lindsey Graham tweeted, The entire McCain clan is doing exactly what the McCains have done through generations. Rise to meet the challenge. The 81-year-old senator has spent his life serving the country he loves. Go John, go. Go John, go. He ran for president twice, winning the Republican nomination in 2008. A staunch Republican and fierce conservative. Stand up, stand up and fight. McCain already defeated cancer once back in 2000. And then he was diagnosed with brain cancer in 2017. The straight-talking senator still never afraid to take on either party and fight for what he believed in. Days after brain surgery, returning to the Senate floor, McCain cast the deciding vote against President Trump's attempt to repeal and replace Obamacare. The man known as a maverick, making his final appearance last autumn, giving an emotional speech in Philadelphia. I'm the luckiest guy on earth. I have served America's cause. I see now that I was part of something important. And now he has spent his final months with his family and issued one last plea for civility. I'd like to see our politics begin to return to the purposes and practices that distinguish our history from the history of other nations. I'd like to see us recover our sense that we are more alike than different. That is pure John McCain, isn't it? A reminder of who we really are, have been, can be as Americans, even in this slightly hysterical political moment. And if you think about it, in that encouragement, in one of his last public statements for all of us to be the best version of ourselves as citizens, John McCain, still serving his country. Let, let's hope we hear and heed that message. Terry Moran in Sedona, thank you. Let's talk more about John McCain with ABC News Chief Political Analyst Matthew Dowd, who's in Texas this morning, and ABC News Political Commentator Cokie Roberts, who's in D.C. Good morning to both of you. Morning, Dan. Cokie, yeah. let me start with you. When, when people call John McCain a maverick, what do, you, what do they mean? How, how did he earn this reputation? Well, because he didn't always toe the party line. Now, when he arrived in Washington in 1982, uh, during the Reagan years, he was a very staunch partisan. Uh, but something happened along the way, and that something, or someone, was Mo Udall, the fellow Arizonan who uh, was a liberal Democrat and a lovely man. And he took McCain under his wing, and McCain always talked about it, how Udall just uh, brought him back to the state, uh, included him in things he would say, you know, and John was part of this, and McCain said, I didn't know what he was talking about, but he gave me credit for it. And uh, he learned that compromise made things happen. And uh, he was much more willing, uh, as he served in Congress, to reach out to Democrats, uh, to sometimes thumb his nose quite publicly at his party, while still being a very staunch partisan. Including quite famously on campaign finance reform, right. uh, um, uh, Matt. Let me go over to you. You know, he strikes me as an unusual politician in many ways. But one of the things that's most unusual is that he's been willing, in, especially in these final days, to speak frankly about his mistakes or what he perceives to be his mistakes, including he says the nomination of Sarah Palin. How unusual is it for a politician to talk about their errors? 
It's highly unusual, Dan, but very much needed at this point in time. I remember somebody asked me once, what one piece of advice would you give to a politician in running for office? And I said, make a mistake once a month and apologize for it. <laughs> and we don't see that in our politicians. And, and John McCain was the first person to say he made mistakes, and he did. There was many documented over the time. He was imperfect, but he tried to do the job that he was elected to. And I remember well, you know, the Straight Talk Express in 2000, when we, with Bush, were running against him, and he was traveling throughout the country, throughout New Hampshire, and he would just say it like it is. He would say it about himself. He would speak about others' mistakes. But he was one of the few politicians, which I say we need, with some sense of humility and humbleness, which is such a contrast to what we see today out of the Oval Office, to say he's, he's made mistakes and done, the, done wrong. You know, it started, though, when he was a POW. And, of course, that experience was so important in his life and so searing. And he said, you know, every, every person has a breaking point, and I reached mine. And uh, there were things he said that he was really sorry about, and he said it afterwards. I think the, the most interesting thing that he's apologized about is in that, uh, in that election that Matt's talking about, uh, there was a dispute about the Confederate flag flying on the Capitol in South Carolina. And he kind of uh, vacillated on that because he didn't want to come down one side or the other. And he said that was wrong. That was just plain wrong, and I, sh I should have come out against that flag. And Matt, we only have a few seconds here, but a as we wrap up, do you have any optimism that America will heed his call or Washington will heed his call for more civility? Well, I think John McCain was much more in touch with where a majority of the country is, which doesn't want tribalism, which wants to treat people with respect and dignity, and wants to move in that direction. Our leaders in Washington won't. So I think it's going to take some time. But the great thing about today and yesterday and is moving the day forward is the contrast between John McCain's life of a guy of service and a guy of character and a guy who could admit mistakes to what we see out of Washington couldn't be more dramatic. And so I think that's a good thing to talk about. Matthew Dowd and Koki Roberts, we really appreciate your analysis on a Saturday morning. Thank you both. Good to be with you. Thanks, Dan. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.